Don't get us wrong, there are definitely fashionable men out there, they're just maybe not the majority. So, for those of you that need a bit of an improvement in the style department, pay attention. We're not even talking about makeovers. A little can go a long way. Number 24. The Monochromatic Outfit It might put some people off to dress all in one color. For one, you risk looking like a crayon. For another, you might think it's boring. However, ways for you to not look lame in a monochromatic outfit do exist. To keep it interesting when everything is the same color, try mixing textures of the fabric instead. Also, try not to wear too many layers if you're going to be wearing just one hue. Benefits include you looking taller and slimmer if the color you go with is dark, like black or navy blue. Number 23, men wearing flip-flops. The general public has debated whether or not men should even wear flip-flops. Gender equality, right? Fine, men get to wear flip-flops. But please, restrict wearing flip-flops to just the beach or pool. This goes for women and everyone else too. If you don't want to commit a fashion faux pas, just leave those thonged sandals at home unless you have a water day planned. Otherwise, we could all do without that awful flapping sound when you walk in these sorry excuses for shoes. Ooh, too harsh? Number 22, suit jacket buttons. For those of you that don't frequently wear suits, it might be a little confusing when you do have to wear one. When it comes to a three-button jacket or vest, you should always leave the last button open if you're not going to leave the jacket completely open. That bottom button is made to be left unbuttoned. In a vest with lots of buttons, it's commonplace to leave that last button unfastened as well. Number 21, matching leather. Say one day you do decide you're going to ditch the sneakers and opt for something a little more stylish. You then take out your leather oxfords from the shoe closet and make your way out of the house. Then you catch sight of yourself in the mirror and realize that your black leather belt looks really weird paired with your tan leather shoes. Remember to always match your leather, whether it's shoes, a jacket, a belt, or even your watch. Number 20, two tight shirts. Avoid the too tight shirts, guys. We know you want to show off your pecs and your guns, but save that for the gym or the beach. There's nothing stylish or chic about ill-fitting clothing, and that includes items that look way too tight. Snug clothing is fine. After all, a fitted wardrobe looks best as a general rule of thumb. Number 19, the structured coat. Hoodies and really lax fabric are fine if it's not too cold out and you're going somewhere super casual. When it's winter though, invest in a structured coat. Pea coats and the like add to your stature and overall shape. It also gives your figure a nice bulk without looking frumpy. A nice coat also adds a touch of class and professionalism to your look. Number 18, a good watch. It's not traditionally masculine to wear a lot of accessories the way they market women to wear accessories. Men, you don't have to be afraid of adding something here and there to your wardrobe. No one's going to think less of you, and if they do, they probably don't have good fashion sense, so what do you care? That being said, invest in a nice watch. It gives you a certain amount of stylishness that you can't get from the other limited amounts of men's accessories out there. Remember though, if you have a sports watch, don't wear it with your suit. Number 17, the square-toed shoe. Recently, there's been a surge of hate for the square-toed shoe for men. While square-toed boots made for women can often look vintage, the square-toed shoe has a bad vintage look to it, the kind of look that needs to be left in the mid-2000s. Instead, opt for a more pointed toe when it comes to your dress shoes. Number 16, match your socks. Sometimes we think of socks last when it comes to putting together an outfit. Since we told you guys you can't wear flip-flops, it looks like you're gonna need to wear more socks in your closed-toed shoes. When wearing socks with a suit, make sure that your socks match your pants. If they match the color of the shoes, it might look more like a boot. Of course, you could always don some statement socks and look just as good. Number 15, be more aware of proportions. We should all be more aware of proportions. Just because one kind of clothing looks good on someone else, it might not look good on you if you have a completely different frame. A pair of glasses may look cool to you, but if the frames are small for your face, it just won't be flattering. Be mindful of the size of your tie, too. A too skinny tie against wider chest dimensions might look a little silly. Number 14, the tuck-in. What? There's a rule for tucking in shirts, too? Yeah, so pay attention. Tucking in shirts might be considered a bit dorky. Nowadays, the nerd look kind of looks a bit retro and even fashionable. If you do want to tuck in your shirt, only do so if you're wearing a belt. The belt completes the look nicely by cinching in the waist in contrast to most loose-fitting t-shirts. Number 13, pant length. For a lot of people, they don't want to be bothered with the details of how to purchase pants or trousers. 
Does it come up to your waist? Can the zipper and buttons close? If the answer is yes, then you're golden. But wait, you need to think of the length too. Unless you're super tall, then you won't worry too much about the pants being too short. Here are some rules for length though. With trousers, the hem should reach just over your heel. With jeans, if you have shoes on, it's fine if it bunches up a little. Barefoot, however, it should reach the bottom of the heel. Number 12, dress shirt length. Here's another detail you probably never even thought about. We know we didn't. When wearing a tux or a suit, make sure that the sleeve of your dress shirt measures slightly longer than the sleeve of your jacket or blazer. The sleeve length should be about a quarter to a half inch longer than the jacket sleeve so that the dress shirt peaks slightly out. Number 11, hide your undershirt. At no point should people realize you are wearing an undershirt. Even if everyone could probably guess you're wearing an undershirt, they still shouldn't be able to see it. Make sure you pick a shirt that will blend seamlessly under the color of your dress shirt. People prone to sweating, you should probably wear one so that it absorbs most of that sweat and doesn't make it so apparent on the outside. Number 10, pocket square contrast. When you add a pocket square to your look, make sure to remember these two things. A light colored suit will match well with a darker colored pocket square and vice versa. If you have a dark colored suit, add a light colored pocket square. A suit that looks more vibrant in color might even pair nicely with a pocket square with an interesting pattern. Number nine, folding the sleeves. We know what you're thinking, but I spent so much time trying to perfectly iron this nice button up shirt. Why would I mess it up by folding the sleeves? There's a time and place for folded shirt sleeves. If it's really business time, you're just gonna roll those babies up. For a nicer, less messy look, here are some rules to follow. Don't roll it up by the cuffs. There's charts that show you how to do it correctly. For example, you should start by rolling the sleeve up by two widths of the cuff. Number eight, to button or not to button. A basic rule for leaving shirt buttons open. Do what you like, of course, but if you want to look fashionable, don't go too far down. A good number to abide by is two. Make sure to not leave more than two buttons unbuttoned from the top, and only if you're not wearing a tie. Number seven, the fit of denim. Look, it's no longer the late 90s. The baggy look should not have stayed as long as it did. What did we think we were gonna do with all that extra fabric? Fly? Anyway, now that the air is over, let's talk about what you should be looking out for when it comes to buying jeans. Denim stretches out, so avoid buying a pair that's too comfortable because it will only get baggier. The fit should be slightly tight, but it will relax over time. Number six, suspenders and a belt. That's a big no. In movies, it might seem appropriate to wear both because that's what geeks wore. Think about it though, why would you need both? They're both meant for holding your pants up, so if you're wearing suspenders, leave the belt at home. Number five, tone down those pleats. Are you trying to cut something? No, then don't make the pleats on your pants so prominent. Nobody needs it. One thing people sometimes go too hard in the paint for when they don't have to is when they iron those pleats to razor sharpness. It has no correlation to your professionalism. Pleats look fine, but only if they're subtle. Number four, picking the right tie. To spice up just about any old suit, try picking a contrasting tie. That doesn't mean you necessarily have to find the most interesting pattern. If anything, avoid that, because patterns run the risk of looking tacky. Just find one that's a different color from your jacket suit, yet complements it. It keeps your wardrobe from looking plain and boring. Number three, where the tie falls. You also have to think about where the necktie falls, too. After you tie the tie, the end should sit right at your waist. Past the belt is too long, and right above the belt is too short. To make sure you don't commit this fashion crime, know that tie carefully. You do have to admit when you notice someone has a tie too long or too short, and it totally looks weird. Number two, the statement jacket. If you're looking for a way for your suits to not look like everyone else's, maybe go for a statement jacket instead of a plain one that's the same color as your pants. Everything else will have to be plain for this to work, including the tie, if you still wear one. Focus also on the fit of the jacket, how comfortable it is. The jacket should be fitting to your frame so you don't look like a caricature of a businessman, but it should also feel comfy because you do have a shirt on underneath. Number one, know how to tie a tie. It's the simplest rule in the men's fashion book. Know how to tie a tie. If you don't know, then learn. There's different ways to tie a tie if you're more into a necktie than a bow tie. It's a useful skill to have, almost like a rite of passage. It can be difficult trying to figure out all those knots. Knowing how to tie a tie means you've mastered the most complicated part 
of Looking Put Together Boys. Don't put this off if you don't know already. What did you think of our style tips? Were there major ones we forgot? Let us know. If you think your wardrobe is a little more put together now, then don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more videos every day. Thank <laughs> you.